Thank you for praying for me. When I was a young man and a minister in a little town, I used to ride my bicycle all over town, uh, visiting people and, and uh, hospitals and senior citizens' homes and people who want to know about Jesus. And everywhere I went, there was always a little girl who was perched on the front seat of my bicycle. Without a helmet on. Today that would be illegal. But that little girl grew up and she is here with me today. Brooklyn is here from uh, Padawawa in the Bro army. Brooklyn in Jasalam. And my daughter Ashley and her husband uh, Randy. Doctor Ashley and Randy in And a little blonde haired boy. <laughs> Now I'm just going to take my father. 
بودم که چرا خب به یه دلیل نزا شما دارم تو زندگی من باشه حالا میخواد پدرم رو از ما بگیره و نظرت باشه The selfish side of me said Father please don't take him Let me have him a few more years و سمت خودخواد وجود من میگو خدا یا ازت خواهش میکنم که پدرم رو از همون نگی و اجازه اجازه دیگه چند سال بیشتر با ما باشه But as a Christian as somebody who loves the Lord and professes to want to walk like Christ and be Christ in this world, when hardship comes, when people need to leave us. We need to trust that we don't always get to know why. ما احتیاج داریم که اعتماد کنیم با اینکه ممکن است دلیلش رو ندونیم ولی بعد اعتماد کنیم. So I needed to give my daddy up to my daddy. از نیاز داشتم که پدر زمینی رو بلند کنم به حضور پدر آسمانی. So although it makes me sad to stand before you and to tell you that's what I do, I tell you that. and victorious words because I give him to my heavenly father. And I want you to know that I stand before you today encouraging you that your God loves you so much whether he leaves you or takes you. He will be your anchor. He will be your strong tower. Amen. He will be your provider when you have nothing left. This is a verse that I hold on to. Humble yourselves. Therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up to in due time. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah. All of your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Amen. You need to never forget that you have a heavenly daddy that cares for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Life is not yours to bear, but it's his, and he died for us. So whatever you're going through today, whether it's a loss, whether it's cancer, whether it's financially, emotionally, Your God is mighty. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Still one more girl to meet. <laughs> Christmas. Christmas is seeing God. Hallelujah. The passage, the Bible that was read to us contains one of the foundational truths about God. It starts first as a prophecy in the book of Isaiah. But that's another sermon. But verse 23 reads in this way. The virgin will be with child. 
will give birth to a son. They will call him Emmanuel. Which means God with us. Repeat that with me. God with us. God with us. God with us. God with us. John Wesley was the founder of a big church. John Wesley, on his deathbed, he breathed those same last words. The best of all is God with us. And if he died with those words on his lips, my challenge to you is that we should live with it in our hearts. God with us. Amen. Very simple. Number one, the word God. The creator of the universe. The king of the universe. Became a human being. This is the first time in the New Testament we're told that Jesus is God. Oftentimes people will say, well, where in the Bible does it say that Jesus is God? Right here. Who is Emmanuel? He's Jesus. What does Emmanuel mean? God with us. In the very last book in the Old in the New Testament, we read this. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. Because you were slain with your and with your own blood you purchased men from God from every tribe and language and people and nation. You notice it says his own blood. God with us in human form. His blood. The creator, the king of the universe, became a human being. Well, why would God do that? We live in a spiritual world. There are many religious options. And every religious teaching calls its followers to follow. Some form of morality or goodness. It says, do this or believe this. Achieve this. There are pantheists who believe in many gods. There are Muslims and Jews who are monotheists. One God. Christianity is built upon monotheism. But teaches that God became a human being. Why would God do that? Because people are essentially sinful. We're selfish. We are we feel self-righteous. The man is born alienated from God. And morality 
and goodness of any flavor. Cannot and will not bring you into a right relationship. God became a human being. God so he could do for us what we could not do for ourselves. And through his death, burial, and resurrection, he accomplished a way back to God for us. Second word, with. The creator of the universe put himself in a state of withness. God appeared to Job. And he came in the form of a whirlwind. And a tornado. And it terrified you. God appeared to God appeared to Abraham in a smoking furnace and his intense heat. God appeared to Moses in the form of a, a form of a burning bush and a pillar of fire. And then when Solomon built a temple, God appeared in the form of smoke which saturated the camp. The Old Testament images of God were always terrifying. On one occasion, Moses asked to God, I want to see you. Do you remember God said no? But he said, I will show you my hind parts. And high in the mountain. God in all of his radiance. Passed by a terrified Moses. So much so that Moses' face literally shone. And when he came down from the mountain, he covered his face. What was denied Moses was actually granted to Mary and Joseph. And through the pages of scripture to you and to me. Could you imagine if Moses had been transported through a time machine to Bethlehem to the innkeeper's bar? And had a chance to see God. And when he opened his eyes, he saw a baby. Christmas is seeing God. Why a baby? Because a human baby speaks to every person. Every culture, every language, every age, the same message. Intimacy, acceptance, and access. The third word, God with us. Us is a limiting term. 
It speaks of exclusiveness. Not everyone. Not all people. With us. But look who it includes. Look around the manger scene. And the Christian story. It includes shepherds. Simple folk. People who are uneducated or were not able to get an education. They were outcasts. They were broken. They were humble people. It also includes wise men, astrologers. They were achievers. They were intellectuals. They were people with impressive resumes. And in the manger scene, you'll see everything in between. See us is anybody who's willing to lay down their list of achievements. And come to God with empty hands. On His terms. Through His Son, Jesus Christ. Through the death, burial, and resurrection. So three quick points of conclusion. In the Christmas story, Joseph is in a very confusing life-changing circumstance. Embrace a woman who appears to have been unfaithful. Or have her potentially stolen. He chooses to embrace the message. When Emmanuel, God with us, was sufficient for him, and he embraces and accepts his circumstances and Mary. Since the last time we were together, you know that I developed a cancerous tumor in my brain. And two weeks ago, I had brain surgery. And how did my family and my wife and I face this? Emmanuel, God with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And his handprints. Because of your prayers. Hallelujah. Have been all over us. Hallelujah. And so I say, whatever you are facing, Whatever brings tears to your eyes. Whatever it is. Emmanuel. God is with us. The Christian message tells you that God can get very, very close. Is there anything that stopped that you are doing that's stopping God to get close to you? Or what are you doing to get close to God? Maybe you need to put down your list of achievements. Nobody comes to God with a resume in their hand. If you draw close to Him, 
He will draw closer to you than the Christian Christmas story. In the Christmas story, he became a baby. When you draw close to God, he will indwell. And finally, the Bible records three human responses to God. There's terror. And people run from him. Eventually those same people crucify him. Then there's people who ignore God. And they live directionless and unfulfilling <coughs> lives. And then there are people who worship. And he lives in our lives, lives of destiny and meaning. God with us. These were the last words breathed by a dying man. I propose that we live with him on our hearts. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.